Hello Soundies, welcome to our Sound for Video session, 12th of November, 2023. Great to have you here. Uh, good to hear all of the weather reports and such here. We've got Audio Buff joining us from Oklahoma. Eric's coming in from Rochester, New York. Robert from San Mateo, California. And Keith is coming at us from Philadelphia. Daniel was here earlier from Valencia. Matt from Music City, Tennessee. Uh, Nashville, I believe that is. Uh, <laughs> and then Rag and Bone Puppet Theater from Ottawa, Canada. Thanks for joining us all. It's good to have you all here. Let's jump over to our agenda. I'm running the show solo today, but good news, Danny will be here in spirit. Her voice is actually going to be in a recording that we're going to use. Um, looks like Yanti's here from Sweden as well. Yanti, welcome. Good to have you here. All right. Uh, obviously, this is going to be a workshop and a practice session. Um, what we're going to do is some, uh, well, we're going to work on dialogue with dialogue audio. So it'll be a recording that uh, we made with Danny's voice. And if you've got um, some good over ear headphones, those would be really, really helpful for this exercise. Um, if not, listen on the best speakers that you have available to you. But we are going to spend a little bit of time there and we're going to, we're going to apply two different effects and teach you how to hear them. Number one, EQ. And then number two, compression. And um, we'll just spend a little bit of time going through those. And so we'll hear the same clip over and over again. You're going to probably get tired of hearing the same Sherlock Holmes quote. But um, nevertheless, it's a great way to learn how to hear EQ and how to make mixing decisions. Whether Actually, I changed the name. I originally called this dialogue post ear training, but I've decided to change it to dialogue audio ear training because this is just as applicable in live sound as well. So um, we'll be doing that in just a moment here. Uh, George, good to have you here with us today, joining from Delaware. Um, oh, Matt says, I had to help out a friend. Uh, the audio and video of the recording were out of sync. Lucky the guy on stage dropped a book and that was almost as good as a clap. That's a perfect sync point. <laughs> Hi, Alan. It's good to have you here. Joining from Richmond, Virginia and Jazz, good to have you here as well. Okay. Um, so the, the point of this practice or ear training, if you will, is to help you make better decisions while you're mixing. So if you listen to a clip of dialogue audio and you're like, hmm, I don't know if that sounds as, as good as it can be. Um, there are some techniques, of course, you can use with EQ. And at some point you may need to use some compression depending on the type of program that you're mixing. But the... I think what, what happens is, is there, there are some kind of basic things, and we'll talk through this. Like you can you can actually take a point in an equalizer, a parametric equalizer, and boost it up and sweep it around and here, or you can do the inverse as well. You can actually cut fairly substantially and move it up and down the spectrum to hear what how that changes the sound and make some decisions. But if your ear is trained, you can do that a whole lot faster, and you can do it with more confidence. And I think... Uh, EQing like that is something that a lot of people struggle with. When they first learn that technique and they start to try and do it, they just it just seems really intimidating, and they're not sure what they're listening for. And this this happens to all of us uh, when we first start. But with ear training, and even if you are more experienced, ear training will just help you do it faster and with more confidence. So we're going to do that. Compression. We'll take a, we'll we'll start on that one as well. That's a whole that's a very deep topic as well. Um, but we'll do some basics there with compression as well. So with that, um, Steve, good to have you here from Victoria, BC, British Columbia. George, um, compression and EQ, exactly what I'm working on now for my first editing project. And this is timely. <laughs> um, it's easier to hear Danny than to be able to see Danny while she's away. Indeed. So we're going we're gonna to go with what we have here today, which is a recording of Danny. So let me get the computer all queued up here. So we have DaVinci Resolve. I'll switch over to the Mac here. Okay. So I've got DaVinci Resolve set up and we're going to just use this little Sherlock Holmes clip. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty and yet you are quite sure of the fact. Okay. So that's, that's where we're starting with. And I'm going to cut back here. In fact, I'm going to go back to the main camera. 
So the way this works, um, again, best headphones that you have available to you is, is going to make this a little bit easier. So I'd recommend that. Or if you've got some good near field monitors and a quiet, quiet space that you're working in, that can work as well. I find that headphones, usually I can hear these kind of things a little easier. But um, let's, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, apply one effect at a time. So what I'll do is I'll put a little note here in the chat and I'll say this is sample one with a little line. And once you hear that sample, I want you to take your best guess as to what we're doing. So I'm going to start with equalization. And what I'm looking for is uh, with EQ, we're going to do either a boost or a cut. And then I want you to identify whether it's a boost or a cut and the rough frequency at which you think I'm doing that boost or cut. Okay. All right. Um, let's start there and we'll come back. Shoji has a good question here. We'll come back to that a little later. So with that, I'm not going to show you what I'm doing because <laughs> that's how you learn. All right. So I've got my equalizer up and here is the first sample. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. And now here's without that EQ. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. Off. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. Okay. I will admit this first one was a hard one, but I'm going to, I'm going to do some more obvious ones in just a, f a few minutes here. So go ahead and in the chat, go ahead and under sample one, if you can just identify what you think we did there, um, go ahead and put that in and let's see where we end up. So that's our first one again, pretty, that one's a subtle one. So that one's going to be tricky. Um, but it is a really, I think this one's an important one. We'll talk about it in just a minute and how that impacts things. All right. Rag and Bone Puppet Theater says low cut, question mark. I think that's a really good guess. Let's see what others have to say here. The chat is open. Don't be afraid to share. Uh, definitely felt like lower frequency was filtered out. Um, Richard says cut at 400. Very good. Good, good. We have some good guesses here. There are some good, uh, good answers here. We'll give it just a few more moments here. I had um, just a note while you, while I'm waiting for people to to answer here in the chat. There are um, ear health. I want to talk about ear health for just a moment. I I have <laughs> my ears have a tendency. I know it's a gross topic. Sorry, but we need to talk about it. They generate. Um, Wax. Wax builds up in my ears over time. And I've found I usually need to go in about once a year to an audiologist and have them remove the wax. Um, you can do it at home as well. Be careful. Make sure you're using a kit that is safe for your eardrums. But um, that's one thing that I found. We have some more here coming in. Shoji says cut around 100 hertz. Yanti says cut at 400 hertz, 6 decibels. Wow, very specific. Um... My iPhone speakers have trade me. <laughs> I think you mean betray oh we betrayed you, yes. <laughs> it's tough on those little tiny iPhone speakers. Let me just show you what it was. Um, it looks like one a couple more came in. Uh, George says, guess I need headphones. And Steve says low frequency cut. And that is correct. Let me just show you here. Um, switching back to the Mac here. It was indeed a low frequency cut or a high pass filter. Um, and it was actually at 211 hertz. So it went fairly 
far up. And that's what I found with women's voices. Often you can cut way higher and remove a lot of the rumble um, from your recording. So it's going to be room noise and reverberation, a uh, little bit of reverberation, not all of reverberation, but some um, help remove things like air conditioning or HVAC noise, fans a little bit. So um, with men's voices, you typically have to go lower. Um, for my voice, I usually have a high pass filter somewhere around 70 hertz. So I don't cut into my voice, but I do manage some of that low end. So like I said, that one was super Oh no, I think I may, if, if the astute people may have just seen what I'm going to do next. So, <laughs> um, uh, anyway, I, I, uh, I guess I need to be careful about that. So we will, we'll do some more exercises here. Again, if you get, if you didn't get that one, don't worry. That one's a super subtle one. The reason that a high, a high pass or a low cut filter, same thing, different names is often helpful is that. In recording situations, oftentimes you're just going to get some low end rumble. It's just the reality of the world in which we live. And rolling some of that off with a high pass filter is usually helpful to kind of clean it up a little bit without affecting the overall dialogue sound. So usually pretty useful. Again, with women's voices, you can usually go higher. Maybe I, you know, I find 180 Hertz, a lot of women, it depends on the woman's voice, but a lot of them, you can go a little bit higher men's voices or, or more bassy voices usually i stay under 100 and usually closer to like 70 or so really deep voices you might need to go a little bit lower but um so uh jazz says old samsung phone and phone speaker so i can't make any guesses <laughs> it is tough on those little little speakers all right let's do our second sample here and for those of you that snuck a peek at the uh, settings here you might have an unfair advantage, but let's go ahead and do another one here. And here we go. When I go like this, this effect is off. When I go like this, the effect is on. So let's go sample two. Here we go. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. Okay. Go ahead and have a listen there. Christopher, I see your note. When she says, ask in the clip, really grating, ringing. Let me play it again. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. Okay, go ahead and put your guess, your best guess down in the chat there. That's sample number two. Um, Christopher, I'm not noticing a lot of that on my end. It's It's not a... I would definitely EQ this clip uh, for sure. Not necessarily how we're doing it now, but <laughs> um, I haven't found any ringing necessarily, at least in my playback here. Others, but others chime in too if you are hearing that. But sample number two, there it is. We played it uh, with the processing off and then processing on. So if you're watching back and you want to rewind, when I have my finger up like this, that's when the, the effect is on. When I um, go like this, that means the effect is off. So really curious to hear what you all think there. And for those of you that got a glimpse of the equalizer earlier and memorized the <laughs> settings, um, 
go ahead and put your answer too. <laughs> All right. These, this was a sample that we used from our review a uh, week ago on the Rode NT1 Signature Series. There's so many NT1 microphones from Rode now that it's, I have to think to get make sure I get the right one. Um, this is the NT1 Signature Series. All right. How's everybody doing out there? Are you getting... Are you getting it? Is it making sense here? Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, this. There we go. Let's see. Rag and Bone, not noticing issue with ask. Okay, here we go. Richard says uh, boost at 200 hertz. Good. Shoji, boost around 300 hertz. Increase in mid-range frequencies. Good, good. Mid-range mid -range boost, don't know the numbers, okay. Low-mid boost, very good. Low-frequency boost from Daniel, good. Um, 350 hertz boost from Eugene. Now, um, boost in the low-mids, good guess, Mark. Um, some people, clever people, may actually have a real-time analyzer on the live stream right now, and they're actually watching it when we play this back so they could actually see it. Um, Definitely a boost. Don't know the numbers. Okay, you're right. Um, cut from 2K and above. Ooh, that's a really interesting one. And we're going to talk more about that because you can actually make a cut in, in an equalizer and it can actually sound like a boost of other frequencies. Um, pretty interesting. So Yanti, not a bad guess there. Okay. In fact, that was a boost at 300 hertz. Quite an extreme one, actually. 10 db boost at 300 hertz so that was a pretty big pretty big boost so, so those those boosts or those frequencies uh around 300 hertz with with dialogue in particular it can start to sound sort of muddy or even woolly a little bit so it's um if you are feeling like you're getting a little bit of that then um then uh, <laughs> then this is where you might want to start looking. We'll show you how to look. Derek Cooper has a very specific guest, a boost at 217.5 hertz. Very clever, <laughs> Derek. <laughs> um, not quite close, though. Within, uh, let's see, you were within 70, uh, 80 some, so 80 some hertz. Very good. And Alejandro, really good to have you here. Thanks for joining us. All right, let's move on to sample number three. I'll get this queued up here in the chat. Again, if I hold my finger up, that's when the effect is on. When I have the zero, that is when the uh, sample or the, the effect is off. So here we go. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. Okay, so that's sample number three. Go ahead and put your best guess there in the chat. Let's see how we did. Oh, they're coming in quickly here. Eugene says a six kilohertz boost, so 6,000 hertz. Good, good guess there. Um, Javier, jump on in. Love to hear your, uh, your shot at this as well. Uh, Matt says, my good headphones don't work on my laptop, leaving only my AirPod Maxes, which are great for music movie, but not good for sound editing. <laughs> um, you might be able to hear these still. They might, they might be a little colored, but I think they'd still be good. All right, go ahead. Here we go. Um, Richard says, a boost at 500 hertz. Steve says boost around 5 kilohertz, 5,000 hertz. Uh, Billy Elliott says a 4,000 to 5,000 uh, hertz boost. Mark says boost at 5 kilohertz. Okay. 
Indeed, it was a boost just above five kilohertz. Um, so, a um, couple more guesses here. Higher end cut at nine kilohertz. Uh, that could be, um, but it actually was a five kilohertz boost. <laughs> Shoji says a boost around one to two kilohertz. Um, Robert says an upper mid range boost. This is a mid high frequency boost, three to four decibels. And Danny says, about to be listening on an iPhone as I drive. Not sure I can participate, but will note the world's worst example of dialogue EQ. Telephone calls are not devoid of scientific basis. <laughs> All good. Safe driving there, Danny. All right. So that was a uh, 5,100 hertz boost of nine decibels. So that was uh, starting to get into or actually into the sibilance range. So Danny has a fairly, um, she does not have a lisp, but she certainly doesn't have a lot of sibilance in her voice. She has a little bit of a drier voice or a darker voice in that regard. Um, Derek had a guess here, by the way, 1,280 hertz. Okay. And Danny says, telcos preserve the essential frequencies for in delibility i think you um they do they make it so they i think it, originally i think it might have just been poor you know the quality of speakers that were available at the time but um telephones do definitely focus on the frequencies that where where the majority of dialogue sits or or spoken word sits so they're very 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 much boosted in the kind of the mid-range um, just so you can hear as well. Richard says, can we see the analyzer screen? We actually will. We'll go back and do that. I want to just do the exercise first, and then we'll come back and get that. Okay, we're ready for sample number four. Get your ears ready. Um, I've got the chat all queued up there. Let's go ahead and do sample number four. And here we go. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. Okay. Good place there. We've got some... Uh... Some answers coming in here. Eugene says 150 hertz boost. Nice. Steve, boost around 250 hertz. Also good. I'm impressed, people. We're getting some good guesses here, some good answers. Uh, boom pole hand muscle memory. <laughs> um, here, Mark says boost around 250 to 300 hertz. Rag and Bone says boost at the lower end. Uh, Billy says light compression, question mark. Actually, uh, my mistake, uh, we're not doing compression just yet. We will come to compression, but uh, no, no compression yet. Although th they're related, and that's actually a really good guess. Derek says 202 hertz. Good work, Derek. Derek is playing by Price is Right rules, it looks like. Um, doing good. Okay, we'll give folks just another couple of seconds here to get um, your answers in. See how we did. It's coming along nicely here, friends. Okay, I think we're going to... Oh, here we go. Um, boosting lows or cutting highs. Good. Low boost of a few dB. Excellent. Okay. In fact, this one was a 118 hertz boost, so a low frequency boost of 10.9 decibels. So this is where audio starts to sound woolly. 
It also happens a little bit with proximity effect as well. You get a lot of low frequency boost and it gives that kind of woolly sound. So if you have a recording that's sounding woolly like that, maybe a podcast recording in particular where you're close miking someone, that's where this frequency is important to know and you can you can pull it down a little bit. You can use a high pass filter or a low cut filter or you can use um, a point filter on a parametric equalizer and just pull that one frequency down. So there we go. A couple of others that came in, uh, boost at 200 hertz, close, definitely close. Mark Holloway is close. Yep, I, I think I agree. Um, cut in the middle range, 500 to 1000 hertz. Interestingly, Robert, you're, you that could also be a similar type thing that happens here. If you cut quite a bit in the mid frequencies, then things can start to sound a little bit like this. We'll do another, we'll do one of those a little later too. Wow, that low, surprising. Yes, so this is this is why I love these exercises. It's really good. Um, don't get discouraged if you're not getting the right answers right away, um, but this is a great way to learn. So let's go on to our next sample here. We'll go ahead and get this queued up in the chat here. So this will be sample, I believe five. And here we go. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why. Okay, we'll stop there. All right. Okay, sample number five. Uh, Derek wants to know, is there a prize? I arrived late. <laughs> we didn't really set up a prize here. Aside from personal growth um, is the prize that comes with everyone wins that prize that it, that actually participates here today. Eugene, 1.2 kilohertz, so 1,200 hertz boost. Derek Cooper, 2,000 hertz dip or cut. Okay, not a bad guess, not a bad guess. Keep them coming. We'll give folks just another moment here. All right. Now, there is now a clip and ask. Yes, Christopher, you are right. You're absolutely right. Uh, Richard says boost 500 hertz plus 5 dB. Very good. Billy Elliott, high shelf, 5K and above, 4 decibels. Uh, Daniel says a boost around 1 kilohertz. But it is nasally, so maybe it's a boost. So difficult. Good point. When you get that nasal, that's a sign. That's a, that's a clip. Big boost in the mid-range, and Mark says a two kilohertz boost. So close, folks. Um, one kilohertz boost of eight decibels. That is that signature kind of starts to get this screamy, scratchy sound in it. Um, can be quite nasally, can actually be lower as well, but definitely um, some things here. Shoji, you're absolutely right. Boost in the mids. Um, actually, Kuchlong up higher, so we're at one kilohertz or 1,000 hertz, so definitely. Um, Darren says, nasal remover, 750 to 800, small Q, four to, four to five dB drop. Yeah, that's a good way. So nasally is usually a little bit below one kilohertz in my experience, but you get the kind of the scratchy, distorting, uh, intense kind of sound at one kilohertz if you boost it too much. And here, that was a full eight dB boost. So um, definitely starting to sound pretty scritchy. Um, and not really pleasant to listen to. Okay. All right. It's time to do our next one. So let's do our next one here. We're going to call this sample six. Sample six. 
Yes, Shoji, there was a clip in that because we boosted so much in the mid-range. And here we go. I, I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. Okay, there we go. Um, that is sample number six. It looks like things are coming in, Eugene. On it, low cut, 400 hertz. Derek, cut below 500 hertz. Good ears, people. Good ears. Uh, Christopher, cut 4K and above. It's the old analog phone sound. Um, boost at 40 hertz, cut at 1 kilohertz. Interesting, interesting. Good. We'll give folks a couple more seconds here to get their items in. Okay. All right, what else have we got here? Large cut in the low frequencies. Low frequency roll off around 400 hertz, um, possibly some high frequency cut. Good. Deep cut up to mid range. Sounds like a lot of the bottom end removed. 500 hertz, 6 dB. Very good, Billy. Cut in low mids. Shelf cut at 500 hertz. So some good, good guesses there. That was a high pass filter, low cut, and it was set to 365 hertz. So we cut off a lot of that low frequency in her voice there. Um, here's the thing with low cuts or high passes. They sometimes have different curves, so they can sound a little bit different. So those guesses that we're saying, for example, Robert says here, low cut 500 hertz, that, that actually, you know, depending on the, the high pass or the low cut that you use, that could be completely right. <clears throat> and you're absolutely right. Low cut, don't know the numbers. Absolutely good work, everybody. So that is uh, sample number six. Let's go to sample number seven. And if you're not getting these, don't give up. The reason that you do this is that you get exposure to it, and the more exposure you get to it, uh, the more your ears become trained and you're able to identify these. So just listen, hang in there. If you're not, if you're feeling like, oh, this is too frustrating, I'm not getting any of them, it's okay. It's okay. If it's your first time doing something like this, it takes some training and that's what we're doing here. So here's going to be sample number seven. Give me just a moment here. Whoops. Okay, here we go. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. Okay, we'll, we'll stop it there.
Um, Steve's having good fun. That's <laughs> good. So glad that you're enjoying it, Steve. Um, Derek guesses or answers boost at 500 hertz. Okay. Good. Um, Billy says a 60 be cut at 1.5 kilohertz. Good. Slight cut in the low mid range. Okay, good. This one was more subtle, I will definitely say. This one's a little bit more subtle. So this is the one that takes a little bit more training to hear. Uh, Richard says a cut at 300 hertz. Simon, a 6 dB cut around 4 kilohertz. Good. Uh, dip around 1 kilohertz and 3 kilohertz. Shoji says cut in the highs. Cut in the upper range. And then Mark says cut around 2 kilohertz. Okay, so here's where it might, um, again, if you're having challenges here, try to think um, in terms of like it's high frequencies or mid frequencies or low frequencies instead of trying to identify a number necessarily. That can, that can really help in terms of getting you closer and starting to take those first steps. So um, here, Kuchlong2 says cut low mids, uh, upper mid range cut 5 kilohertz. And then Darren says, high cut, 2 kilohertz. Okay. In fact, we were back at 5 kilohertz, and it was a 9.9 .9 dB cut. So, tip here. This is getting and get into that sibilance range. If you cut, people start to have a little bit of a lisp. If you boost it, it generally boosts their sibilance. Now, they're going to start, their, their voice will already have some or some lack of sibilance. <laughs> you know, somewhere in the range from sibilance to lisp. Um, and so when you start to hear problems in terms of s too much sibilance or a bit of a lisp, that's where this, this range starting around five kilohertz, um, possibly a little bit higher can be helpful. So if you're getting a lisp, you can boost it a little bit. If you're getting some, uh, grading sibilance, you might want to use a de -esser, or if you just want to do a quick and dirty job, just dropping the EQ, starting around five kilohertz and sweeping it around to see until you kind of are able to tame that sibilance a little bit so it's not quite so grating so um so there we go that was the five kilohertz um boost so or sorry cut five kilohertz 9.9 .9 db cut all right let's do another one here uh let's do this will be sample number eight i believe right go ahead and get sample number eight queued up here in the chat whoops sample eight There we go, and we'll get sample number eight. Here we go. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. Okay, that's sample eight. Go ahead and put your answers in the chat here. Here we go. Derek's quick on the trigger here. Cut, 400 hertz. All right. Good, good. All right. Oh, Simon says wide nine decibel cut, 500 hertz. Okay, good. Ooh, Scott, six dB cut at one kilohertz. Okay, good. Cut at five or six kilohertz. Two dips around 500 hertz and three kilohertz. Okay, wow. Cut in the mid highs. All right, some good, some good notes there. 
We'll give folks a couple more moments here to get these in. Hopefully you're finding this useful. Again, if you if you are finding yourself overwhelmed, you're feeling like, ah, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Just try to kind of focus on whether something's happening in the lows, the mids, or the highs. And again, the highs, the shrill, or not shrill necessarily, unless it's really over overdone, but high frequencies are the um, things like symbols or um, a lot of times mouth clicks. Yeah, that's actually more broadband. It can be a lot, but here's some more coming in here. We've got Mark Holloway, 500 hertz cuss, cu <laughs> cut, excuse me, um, zero to 60, a uh, boost zero to 60 hertz by 97 dB. <laughs> Thanks, Alan. Not quite, but I, I see what you're saying there. Um, for the Q&A, when to boost, when to cut. Okay, good. All right, so the answer for sample number eight is that that was a 9.7 dB cut at one kilohertz. So again, right in that that kind of screamy range. Um, that sometimes can be really, really um, aggressive. It can sound really, it can start to distort. Uh, Curtis is cheating. He knows the answers. Well, <laughs> somebody's got to do it. Um, when I've done these, I'm not always right on either. It's especially tricky when it's when it comes to cases like this because this could actually sound like a boost in the low frequencies when you cut those mids a little bit you notice how it starts to sound a little more muffled um, you might be thinking initially and I, I often find myself doing this is oh is that a boost in the lows um, so um, <laughs> anyway that's um, that's a that's an important thing to keep in mind so let's go ahead and go over to the Mac and let's let's just talk about EQ a little bit what I'm going to do here is switching on over there it is that was our one kilohertz cut when you're not sure when you're listening back to a dialogue recording and you're trying to kind of sweeten it up or fix any problems in it this is a this is the approach i typically take this is a really kind of a rough approach but knowing kind of exercising like we just did a few minutes ago will kind of give you a, a hint as to where to start but this is one thing you can do i can actually take and boost I would never boost more than about 9 dB. So we'll take that to 9 dB. And I like to narrow it up quite a bit. Usually, like, like highest you can go on this EQ is 10, uh, a Q of 10. Sometimes I like to go to 20. But what I do now is I go ahead and play it back. And as I play it back, I'm going to sweep the frequencies around. And what I'm listening for at this point, let me just play here at 1 kilohertz a little bit, and you will hear... I'll turn it on and off so you can hear what it sounds like. And what we're looking for here is like extreme harshness. And when you find that extreme harshness, you can say, oh, a lot of times what you can do is, is you can say, that's a good place to actually cut, apply a cut. And you can do a narrow cut or a wide cut, whatever kind of works for the particular situation that you're doing. Um, but that can kind of move, kind of smooth out the voice a little bit, make it a little bit more pleasant to listen to. But you also have to be careful that you don't go too far um, because you can start to make it less intelligible, less, uh, less easy to understand. Like really bassy voices that are missing a lot of mid frequencies are really kind of difficult to understand. They can sound, they can sound warm, um, <laughs> but they can also be difficult to understand. So let's start there. Here we go. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some... Okay, so you notice there when we stopped at one kilohertz, there's a kind of a, there's a distorting kind of sound, and this is especially when she asks, when she says ask... Um, let's get get it back down to one kilohertz. Play through that again. Some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. 
It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. There's almost sort of a the beginning of a whistling sound as well. So this can be a place where it might be okay to do a little bit of a cut. So I'm going to go ahead and cut just a few dB. Not, not too much. And we can widen it back up. So let's play with and without. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. Okay, pretty subtle here. This honestly, what I typically do is if I'm trying to correct an issue, I'm usually going to do, I'm going to find the resonances. I'm going to find the places that are distorting certain frequencies that are distorting. So if I boost it up to 9 dB, narrow that Q up to between 10 and 20, and sweep back and forth, when I start to hear like this whistling sound at a particular frequency or a lot of distortion and things of that nature, that's where I may have a resonance and I may want to apply a cut. That's typically how I approach it first. Um, so I am, I'm 100% here with uh, audio buff. Finding frequencies is so important. In live sound, I cut before I boost. I start the cue wide and then tighten it up. I don't spend more than four minutes on EQ, so I'm not guilty of over-EQing. Yeah, the part of the trick too is that your ears can start to play tricks on you <laughs> over time. So you have to kind of do it pretty quickly. And that's a big part of the reason too, we were switching back and forth when we were doing the exercise. So I would add the effect and then I would turn it off. So you need that contrast. You often need that contrast. I'm getting headphone hair here. Um, you need that contrast to kind of train your ears, you know, reset your ears really quickly. So that's another another thing you can do is turn the just turn the effect off altogether and then turn it back on. <clears throat> Honestly, this is not the best clip to show how to to sweeten it a whole lot because it's fairly balanced overall. So um, not a not a lot of really a, a, like intense resonances in, in Danny's voice here. Um, so we we. We can come back and, and do that in a little bit more detail another time. All right, can you talk about a bit about dialogue speech intelligibility versus dialogue sound quality? Can you achieve both? I think it's important to achieve both, um, especially intelligibility. So intelligibility is, can you understand what they're saying? And sound quality is, does it sound nice? That's how I kind of differentiate between those two. Um, the problem is, is you notice there when I took that band for that one kilohertz, let's go ahead and do it again. I'm not, I'm not even going to show you. I'm just going to let you listen. So if I take that one kilohertz and I do a massive cut, this is what it sounds like. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. Without. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. With. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite... Okay. So when it comes to EQ, a little bit goes a long way, first of all. So be careful. Um, but that was an extreme example of cutting out mid-frequencies, and you noticed it became a little bit more difficult to understand, not... Well, I, I probably need to boost the levels some too. Another factor, another thing to keep in mind, you need to, when you're comparing two things, always try to get them at the same volume. Now that's tricky when you're doing compression or equalizing like we're doing here because you have to, have to boost the output level to get it there. So let me just boost the output level a bit here. And here again was with that extreme cut at one kilohertz. Quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. 
If you were asked to prove Without. that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. Okay. So I think it's important to achieve a balance between those two. Well, I think intelligibility is one thing, um, and sound quality, especially a lot of people doing podcasts, for example, try to get this really bassy, bassy sound because it sounds like a, like a professional broadcast sound. Um, but if they go to extremes, what happens is it starts to become fatiguing to listen to and the intelligibility goes down. It's harder to understand what they're saying. Um, especially like, for example, if you're in a car with a not so great sound system, <laughs> it could be really hard because there's a lot of road noise and that road noise is a lot of kind of rumbly, low frequency stuff. And then you add this, maybe this podcast where the voices all sound like the bass has been really boosted and the mid range has been cut quite a bit. Um, it, it becomes difficult to hear and you're kind of having to put more effort into hearing. Uh, so it's really kind of tricky. So that's, that, I think there's definitely a balance there. And I think Shoji, that's a great, and I'm really glad you brought that up because that's an important thing to keep in mind. So don't try to go so extreme to make an FM broadcast sound um, at the expense of intelligibility. Make sure you can still hear it. And if you need to test at some point, do some mixing, mix something, apply some EQ to it, um, put it on your phone, go get in your car, drive around and see, uh, especially if you're on an, like an interstate or something, um, make sure you can still hear it well. So that's one thing you can do there. Um, Eric says something really interesting, and I, I completely agree. Definitely the longer you listen, the more confusing it gets. Do it like a reflex to be accurate, but also efficient. Completely, completely agree, Eric. Um, use that first impression, and, and that's why I would say, too, for example, once you get really well-trained, you can identify a frequency and usually be pretty close, but for a start, I think it's really important to say, okay, I'm hearing something different in the low frequencies, or I'm hearing something different in the high frequencies or in the mid frequencies, just kind of get your brain there first. And then beyond that, you can, uh, you can kind of tune from there. Oh my goodness. We haven't even gotten to compression and we're, we just have a few minutes left. So let's go ahead and turn this EQ back to neutral. And we're going to do some compression now. And let's start here. This one's a little trickier, but I want you to be able to hear with and without compression. So we're going to start, I'm going to go ahead and put it on the Mac so you can see what I'm doing here. So here, for example, is our compressor. These are our compressor settings right now. You're going to want to watch this gain reduction meter here. You know, that'll tell you how much gain reduction it's, the compressor is doing. I have a threshold set at a ridiculous level, minus 30 dB. It's ridiculous in this case for a few reasons. We're not using a soft knee. Um, and the dialogue is, you know, gained up pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that down as a start. That's the makeup gain. So listen to this first and see what you think. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. Okay, let's talk about that for just a minute here. So. Um, I obviously use some really extreme threshold settings here. So um, again, the, the idea here is you should be able to hear compression, especially at those ex the extreme levels. It's pretty easy. It's like, oh my goodness, <laughs> somebody has been, uh, is being whacked in the face with a pillow as they're trying to speak. Um, so the, the kind of the approach I typically use with 
dialogue and compression, usually I'm just trying to even things out a little bit, sometimes trying to kind of increase the impact of a voice um, to make it feel a little bit more present or on more extreme level, sometimes you might want it to sound more in your face um, if you're working on a movie, for, for example. But the thing is that for spoken word like what we're doing here today on a podcast or a live stream, I'm just trying to use the compressor to even things out. And so I'm going to use it just like I've kind of like I've said it here. So here's again with a threshold so that we're just doing a little bit of gain reduction, maybe minus zero to minus three, maybe for the really loud words, a little bit more than that, but it's going to look like this and sound like this. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. Okay, now once I've gotten it to a point where it's doing, it's just managing those, those transients that are a little louder, then I can boost up the, le the levels a little bit with, with some makeup gain. So I'm usually going to be in the two to three compression ratio. And for dialogue, oftentimes the attack, not, not zero, but relatively not too quick. Cause you can, if you go too quick, you can start to, um, you shave off some of the consonants. The consonants aren't as crisp necessarily if you try to compress all of that. So that's, that's one thing. So this is a 1.4 millisecond. You go even a little bit longer, maybe closer to two. And then for release, it depends on the cadence of the person's voice. Um, if you go too fast, it's going to start to sound kind of pumpy. If you go too slow, it's going to really emphasize their breaths. So here, let me just kind of play again, and I'll, I'll show you as I change some of these parameters. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty. Okay, I changed the release to 500 milliseconds. On my voice, that'll, I have a, <laughs> I tend to have these kind of big breaths. Um, I have a breath problem when I'm speaking. Danny doesn't have as much of that, so that didn't become as much of a problem here. The kind of the advantage of a longer release time is that the overall sound doesn't sound quite as compressed. Um, it's a little less obvious in some ways, but if there is someone that has, has this tendency to take breaths like that in between phrases, um, everyone obviously has to breathe, but I mean more prominent breaths that are louder. Um, this can have a tendency to boost those a little bit. So they'll be compressed some, and then they'll become more prominent in the overall sound. All right, um, let me kind of tweak this attack a little bit. I'm going to bring this back down to a, where it probably fits better for a lot of voices. And let's go ahead and see if we can, I don't know if we're going to be able to hear this, but listen to the consonants, this, the, the words that start with hard consonants, and see if this makes a difference here. And yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. Listen when she says two and two. I'll go back down to the lowest setting. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four... Hmm. Not a huge difference here. You might be hearing a little bit. Um, but that, that is something that they're very subtle kind of changes that you can make here and that will have very subtle impacts onto the overall sound. The biggest one, obviously, is threshold and ratio. Let's, let's go ahead and... Um, I'm going to drop the threshold again, which sounds like this. You might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, 
you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. Okay. Can you hear that difference that the ratio is making? So the ratio is how much it essentially squashes down the audio once it exceeds um, the threshold. And so the, the higher that you set the ratio, the more obvious the compression is going to become. Now, some compressors also have a hard versus soft knee setting like this one here, which can achieve some, you can, the kind of the rough way of doing that is to change your ratio and reduce your ratio. Um, but watch what happens again, listen carefully. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. Okay. So it's those threshold and ratio that you can hear are the biggest differences, at least I can. So that's that's another topic for us to cover in a little bit more detail in a future episode. But I hope that, that the exercises today were helpful for you. You were able to kind of learn um, some things. And let's just kind of take a last pass through the, uh, the chat here. Uh, as an untrained audio person, I wasted a lot of time listening to things going in circles. That's why people come to the sound for video sessions. So you don't have to spin in circles as much. I think one of the tips there, the kind of the big takeaways for today is when you're listening and you're trying to do some EQ, just try to get the, the general area where you think there's a problem. Then you can use that technique where you boost 9 dB, tighten up the Q and sweep a little bit to find where the real problems are and then do a little bit of a cut there. First pass is, that's a, that's a good way to do it. <clears throat> okay. Um, then we're talking about compression. Mark says compression at that extreme seems to make her voice thinner than without. It definitely, yeah, it's very, very obvious. What do you do when adding compression to dialogue audio raises, uh, or what do you do when adding compression to dialogue audio raises the background noise level? Um, I try not to do really extreme compression. So for example, a lot of, I've noticed this with a lot of YouTube creators that they learn at somewhere <laughs> that the target audio loudness that YouTube has set is minus 14 LUFS. And so they're always trying to achieve that. And that, that can be fine, but if you're working in an acoustically untreated space and you're just doing this sort of hardcore compression to, to and then makeup gain to achieve that minus 14 LUFS, you're gonna raise the noise floor. That's just natural. Um, first of all, I would say people don't, don't compress that hard if you don't have to. Um, and frankly, with YouTube, I think your, your videos can compete just fine audit, you know, in terms of loudness at minus 17, minus 16. I don't think you need to go all the way up to minus 14. That'll give you a little bit more leeway to make something that sounds a little bit more natural, but is loud enough and sits nicely relative to other videos out there. So that's one thing. Another thing, you, of course, you can do some noise reduction as well. If you're finding you're, you're getting quite a bit of noise reduction, that is a, that's another option. Um, Shoji says, could definitely hear the difference in attack on two and two. What's your preference? I usually like to set the attack such that we get that, that consonant come through okay. Um, so what I'll typically do is I'll use a compressor with the attack set somewhere around two to three milliseconds to let some of the, that, that consonant come through, that kind of hard, that hard first part of the consonant come through. So there's lots of intelli there's plenty of intelligibility. Um, and then I'll use a limiter after the compressor so that if I'm dealing with any issues where we're getting really close to zero dB, it'll manage those there. Generally, a really well-recorded dialogue 
recording shouldn't have a lot of issues like that, but you can leave that, that limiter there just for those extreme circumstances. Another thing you can do too, if you do have um, consonant or if you, if you do have transients at some point in your audio that are sticking way out, it's okay to highlight those and pull those down individually. Um, and I usually I find reducing those by about 3 dB sounds pretty transparent. If you go more than 3 dB, it'd be pretty obvious that you've done something there. But if you just pull it down by 3 dB, most people are not going to notice that it was processed that way. So, um, but, to, but to get back to your question, Shoji, um, usually I prefer to leave a, a little bit of a longer attack there if I can, just to maintain some of that intelligibility. So... All right, I think that's gonna do it for us for today. Darren, thank you so much for the super chat. Good meeting, this is fun and informational. Glad you enjoyed it. Um, all right. In the meantime, everybody, this is, it's always awkward doing the outro on my own. <laughs> Let me just get everything queued up here. I have to close that. Um, especially when you're doing it via software. So I am using the Shelford channel today, not the DLZ, so I don't have a linear fader. I can just pull back. I have to go and get a software fader. Um, all right, I think everything should be in a good spot. Uh, yeah, 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 okay. Here's our outro music queued up. <laughs> all right, get out there. Have a great week. We'll talk to you all soon. Take care, everybody.